Wait, one second, Zev. One second. Sure. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Let us begin. Methods okay. of differentiation. All set for tomorrow's exam? Uh, kind of, sir. Some five chapters are left. Just five chapters, okay. Yeah, five, six, I guess. You don't have permutation and combinations, no? Uh, maths got over, sir. Oh, maths is over? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought it's tomorrow. How was no, no, I, How was maths? Was, okay, sir. Some chapters, uh, I did pretty well. Some chapters, like partial fraction sets around, I didn't do well. Can you send me the question paper? Okay, sir, I'll send. Fine. Okay, so methods of differentiation, <coughs> we'll talk about it. So, uh, we only know how to find the derivative of all the standard functions. And I'm sure you know also the derivative of finding, uh, the, find, finding the derivative of inverse trig functions. Are you aware of that? Sine inverse, cos inverse, sine inverse? No, sir. No, okay. So, I'll just give you the list first before I begin with that. Okay, sir. We'll start with derivatives of of standard functions so this is your f of x this is your f dash x so again f of x f dash x f of x, f dash x. Okay. So we'll start with the constant function. We know its derivative is 0. x to the power n, it's n x to the power n minus 1. This is called the power rule of differentiation. Okay. Exponential function e to the power x is e to the power x a to the power x is a to the power x log a to the power e okay. sin x is cos x cos x is minus sin x tan x derivative is secant square x sec x derivative is sec x tan x cos x derivative is minus cos x cortex cortex derivative is minus cos square x now this is a list probably which will which will be not known to you sin inverse x derivative is 1 by under root 1 minus x square okay yes sir how sir is negative 1 by under root 1 minus x square tan inverse is 1 by 1 plus x square okay uh, yes sir seek inverse x is 1 by x under root x square minus 1 cosecant inverse x cosecant inverse x is minus 1 by x under root x square minus 1 and one more last thing is your, let me write it here itself. Cot inverse x is one minus one by one plus x square. Okay. Now, uh, Venkat, I would like you to derive few of them by the use of first principles. Okay. Okay, so just one second, I'll note down these. Yeah, 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 please note down. Inverse x. Hi, Dheeraj. Good morning. Vidyota, good morning. By the way, which exam is there tomorrow? Bio and computers. Bio and computers. Okay. Today you can speak, Dheeraj. There are very few students, so you can speak. You can unmute yourself. How was the math paper, Dheeraj? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Ah, yeah, yeah. Maths was uh, okay, okay. Two sums I didn't get. Okay, rest was proper? Yeah, rest was fine. Okay. Vidyota? 
Uh, it is okay, sir. Okay, okay. So I just uh, started with uh, giving the formula for the derivatives of some standard functions. So a special mention to the inverse trig function derivative. So please make a note of it. Okay. Uh, here is the complete list on the screen. The left hand side of the red line is your function. The right hand side is your derivative. So I would request you all uh, to give me the derivative of the following function by first principle. One is your cosec x, okay. Other is your a to the power x, and other is your uh, tan inverse x. Let's see whether you are able to solve the derivatives or find the derivatives of these three functions by first principles. Again, in the class, I told you there are various manifestation of the first principle. You can use the one which is most convenient and simpler to look. Yes, sir. Can I switch to the next board? Yes, sir. So let's find the derivative of find the derivative of the following by first principles. by the first principles. Number one, a to the power x. Okay, so this is your function. Number two, cosec x. And number three, for a change, inverse trig function. Uh, I will help you out with the third one, but for the first two, I'm sure you should be able to get it. Just remember, recall the de uh, definition of the derivative by first principle, which is x dash x is defined as limit h tending to zero f of x plus h minus f of x by h you may want you can use f of x minus h minus f of x by minus h also doesn't matter so i'll give you two minutes for the first one uh, let's work under the time constraints yes sir Yes, sir. Done. Uh, just a doubt, sir. Yeah. Uh, limit. Uh, if, if you do this operation, a to the power h minus one by h, limit h tending to zero, it's uh, ln a, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Yes, sir. Done. So according to the first. Even I got it, sir. Okay. According to the first principles, it will be a to the power x plus h minus a to the power x by h. If you take a to the power x common, you will get a to the power h minus one by h. Correct. Yes, and just try to recall that this limit over here is ln of a. So your answer becomes a to the power x ln a done with the first one. Second one, write out.
Sir, is there a formula for cosec x plus h? No, like, you have to convert it in terms of sine. Sine, right? Yeah. Yes. Sine x plus h. Like this, you have to do. From here, you can proceed. Oh, yes, sir. Success. Uh, one second, they're trying stuff. Yeah, I'm trying. Sir. Please note this term is a harmless term. Why harmless? Because as you put h as zero, it just becomes sine square x. Mm -hmm. So you can pull it out as sine square x. Oh, uh, one second, sir. Almost done. Yes, sir. Done. Done. Uh, this thing is negative, like uh, minus derivative of sine x using first principles, right? Absolutely, absolutely. If you can recognize that, that's well and good. As you rightly said, this is the derivative of negative sine x. Which is actually negative cos x, correct? But yes. uh, nevertheless, I will do it by you know expansion by using my transformation formula. So this is limit is tending to zero. Uh, two cos uh, x plus x plus h by two into sine of x minus x minus h by two. Okay. Uh, let me bring this two as a denominator of this h. Okay, now this is a harmless term because when you put h as zero, it just becomes cos of x. So just put it out. So my uh, cos of x by sine square x, and this becomes limit h tending to zero, a uh, sine minus h by two divided by h by two. Okay, just put a negative sign here, and this term will actually become a one. So the answer would be negative cos x by sine square x. And if you simplify this further, it will become negative cot x into cosec x or negative cosec x into cot x. So, what did you do in this step? Yeah, sir, could you explain like the second last step or not? This step? No, the one above it. This, okay, I use the transformation formula sine a minus sine b is 2 cos a plus b by 2 by 2 okay, into sine a minus b by 2. That's what I did. Correct? Okay. Clear now? Yeah, clear. <clears throat> yeah. For the last one, I'm going to help you out because it involves inverse trig functions, and you're not been introduced to it before. So let me move on to the next page. See, uh, inverse trig function. So when you're finding the derivative of inverse trig function, of course, by use of first principles, you would write this formula: tan inverse of x plus h minus tan inverse of x by h limit h tending to zero 
But my problem is, I don't know what is tan inverse x plus h minus tan inverse x. For that matter, I don't know what is tan inverse a minus tan inverse b. Correct? Yes or no? Yes, okay. sir. So nothing to worry. Let's say this is your angle theta and this is your angle phi. Correct? See, at the end of the day, tan inverses are some angles, isn't it? Yeah. Right? Any inverse trig function is an angle at the end of the day. So let's say that angle is theta and this angle is phi. Okay. Now, let us begin with the formula of tan theta minus phi. What is that? Tan theta minus tan phi by one, one tan theta tan phi. Tan phi. Now, if tan inverse A is th uh, theta, can I say A is tan theta? Yes, sir. And can I say B is tan phi? Yes, sir. Can I put it over here and write it as A minus B by 1 plus AB? That is equal to tan of theta minus phi. Okay. Mm. And if you take the tan inverse on both the sides, so theta minus phi is going to be tan inverse of A minus B by 1 plus AB. Correct. Now treat this itself as your theta and treat this itself as your phi. I'm not able to write there, but I'll write it here. Treat this as, as phi. Okay. So according to this uh, formula that we derived, can I say I can write tan inverse of, let me write the whole expression, tan inverse of x plus h minus tan inverse of x by h as tan inverse of a minus b by 1 plus a b. Am I right? Whole divided by h. Now this is limit h tending to 0 tan inverse of h by 1 plus x x plus h whole divided by h. Now this is a function which this is a function of h which tends to a zero as h tends to zero. So try oh, to yeah. yeah try to recall this formula where I had told you that limit of tan inverse of x by x as x tending to zero is one, and this will be holding true even for a broader interpretation. That means you needn't have just x over here. You can have any function which tends to zero as x tends to whatever. Correct. And here, this is my function. So what I'll do is, I have to create the same function in the numerator and denominator both. So within this, I have to create down also 1 plus x, x plus h. But I can only do when I do this activity. I cannot just multiply and divide with, I cannot just divide with one number. Okay, I have to multiply also. Does this make sense? Dheeraj Vidyota, does it make sense? Okay, now this, yeah. this fits into our definition, right? This definition and this is one. So the answer is one by one plus X, X plus H. And when you put H as zero, this one becomes nine. one by one plus X square. <laughs> sense? Just, just, uh, Look at it for a few minutes and let me know if you want some explanation anywhere in this particular solution. Yes, sir. So can you scroll? You want me to go off? Okay, little bit. Yes, sir.
we done? Uh, one second, sir. No. What the process? Then this game might be speed. Just a second, they're almost done. So just the last step, can you go down a bit? Yeah, sure. Thank you, sir. <laughs> when is your last exam, everyone? 20th. Oh. Chemistry, sir. Last exam is chemistry. Uh, 10 days of school will go on. Uh, yeah. Uh, from 21st of first, we have school. Okay. And then first onwards is the Shara vacation, sir. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Done. Okay, done. Shara, well, yes, sir. Very good. So now we'll move on to the methods of differentiation. Yes, sir. This is something which you have already known, so I'll be slightly faster and we'll focus more on problem solving. Okay. Yes, sir. So the first method is basically when you have a function multiplied to a constant, let's say C, okay, and F is a function, then it is just C into the derivative of the function. Second, when you have a sum and difference of two or more function and you're differentiating the result, it is as good as finding the sum and difference of their respective derivatives. This rule you must be aware of. Oh, by the way, let me write the name sum slash difference rule. So this is F derivative of G plus G derivative of F. So one at a time you have to differentiate. The other functions will remain as such. And this can be extended even to, let's say you have three functions. Okay. I'll write extension. So even if you have three functions, let me say F, G and H, it will be F, G derivative of H plus F, H derivative of G plus G, H derivative of F. Okay. This rule is called the product rule. We all know that. Fourth rule is when you have a quotient of two function f by g, it is g times derivative of f minus f times derivative of g by g square. Okay, remember the order in which you are writing it. Do not mess up with the order, else your answer will become negative of the previous answer. This is the quotient rule. Okay, now comes the chain rule. Chain rule is applied when you are finding the derivative of composition of function. So f of g. So everybody knows here composition of function. Yes, sir. When one function is fed as an input to the other, that is called composition of function. Okay. So this rule says it will be derivative of f of g with respect to g into derivative of g with respect to x. Okay. And this can extend. 
let's say even if you have a composition uh, of three functions, let me write it as extension. Let's say f of g of h of x. Okay. So first you write derivative of f of g of h of x with respect to g of h of x into derivative of g of h of x with respect to h of x into derivative of h of x with respect to x. Okay. By the way, there is some notation that we normally associate with this. Uh, please be careful about the notation. Notation that we use is f of g of x. Let me not write x. Yeah. f of g of x whole dash is given as f dash g into g dash. There's a difference between these two. Normally people think they are the same notation. There's a difference between them. What is the difference? Here you are differentiating with respect to what? X. But, yeah. Here you are differentiating with respect to G. Okay. Let me ask this question. What do you understand by F dash X cube? You're differentiating X cube with respect to X. No, 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 no. We are differentiating f of x cube with respect to x cube. This is the meaning of this. Yeah. But, if, but if I write f of x cube whole dash, what does this mean? D uh, by dx of x cube. Ha, f of x cube. D by dx of f of x cube. Getting my point? Oh, yes, sir. Okay, so Let's... don't get confused. There are different notations. One second, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, I think product tool, question tool, you are well aware of. Uh, chain rule, in case you have forgotten, we can take few examples of chain rule. Let's say I ask you to differentiate, find the derivative of uh, under root of tan x square with respect to x. Okay, so here there are three functions which are being, you know, composed to form this function. One is root x, other is tan x, and the third one is x square. Correct. So here, if you see f of g of h of x, this itself is your given function, root of tan of x square. Correct. So first, this says you have to differentiate under root of tan x square with respect to tan of x square. It's like saying differentiating under root u with respect to u. What is the result for that? You say 1 by 2, 2. under root u. And u itself is this into now the derivative of tan of x square with respect to x square. What is that? Secant square of that term. Correct. into now derivative of x square itself, which is 2x. Okay. So this is how the chain rule works. <clears throat> is that fine? Yes, sir. Now chain rule has one more advantage. It actually helps us to differentiate a function which is present in some variable with respect to another variable. Let us say, I ask you what is the derivative of sine y with respect to x. Remember here, y is a different variable, x is a different variable. How do you do this? Differentiate sine y with respect to y, differentiate into y with respect to x. Excellent. Yes. One second, sir. That's a question. Okay, so... Co cos y into dy by dx. Absolutely correct. Yeah. As as uh, Venkat rightly said, this is nothing but first you have to differentiate sine y with respect to y into derivative of y with respect to x. This itself is a chain rule. Right? 
So chain rule is one of the most important methods which actually is useful in finding the derivative of any function which is first of all in a composite form and second of all if let's say there are the function is in a different variable vis a be the variable with which respect to which you are differentiating so this will be cos y dy by dx is that fine yes sir it is very also useful in finding the derivative of derivative itself for example if i say d, dy by dx whole cube if i want to find its derivative with respect to x tell me what will happen oh first you do the whole thing so it will come like yeah dy dx that one no correct first you treat this as something cube something cube is 3 Something square. 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 Now, once you are three second care of derivative of dy by dx with respect to x is d two y by d two d x square. This will be useful next year in class twelfth. Getting my point? Yes, sir. So, as a rule, what I say is, uh, in order to make your life simple, imagine uh, just try to recall uh, in your bridge course I had done this. So, first treat this as gates. You are crossing these gates to reach x. Okay, first is the root gate, then is the tan gate, then is again the square gate, etc. Okay, so let's say you are standing near the root gate, so you'll read it as root something. Root something is one by two root something. Then remove that gate once you have crossed it. Then tan something, tan something is secant square something. Once you remove tan gate, you are left with a function which you can dif easily differentiate. So two x. So that is the method that we normally suggest for solving chain rule. now time for some questions so i'll be bombarding you with lot of questions today yeah let us begin with this question hope you can read this cos y is equal to x cos a plus y prove that dy by dx is cos square a plus y by sin a and i'll just give you 3 minutes for this time starts now How would you rate your paper? Overall, was it easy, moderate, difficult? Uh, moderate. Moderate. Actually, it was easy, sir. But then, uh, some like not prepared enough, like some chapters. Yeah, like Part, a stupid person, I forgot differentiation in the last minute. So that's uh, that's one thing I messed up. Oh. How how is tomorrow's preparation? Sir, well, I'm studying. I'm studying. It's not getting over, sir. There's so much. I know, sir. Eleven chapters in bio. It's, it's nice, but it's fun. I guess. Kind of.
Sir, is the Y in the cause and uh, like is the Y in LHS and the Y in RHS the same? Oh, of course, yeah. Y is same throughout. Oh, you, you. Damn. Okay, so one second then. I, it's more complicated than I realized. By the way, this is a very potential question for you in your exams. It may come sooner or later to you. Yeah, it will come. Uh, J or school? No, no, school exams. School, uh, school. Uh, okay, sir. Oh, one second, sir, then. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh yeah, I found that. Can I help you all? Uh, no sir, no sir, please. Uh, this should be ideally at two minutes, two and a half minutes, not more than that. L last steps. Now applying the formulas here. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, D by by D A. Okay, let me take this over. Let's say X in terms of Y is given as cos Y by cos A plus Y. Okay. Uh, let us find DX by DY for a change because I can see X is completely a function of Y. So let me just, just differentiate with respect to Y on both the sides. Okay. So when you're differentiating this with respect to Y, you can use your quotient rule. So it is cos of A plus Y. Derivative of cos of y is minus sine y. Please remember you are differentiating cos y with respect to y, not x. Had you be differentiating cos y with respect to x, you would have written, you would have written minus sine y dy by dx. Yes, sir. Right now we are differentiating cos y with respect to y. So it is just minus sine y dy by dy, but dy by dy is one, so we don't write it actually. Minus cos y derivative of this is going to be minus sine a plus y 
into derivative of a plus y. Derivative of a plus y will be 0 plus 1, isn't it? Because a derivative is 0 and y derivative with respect to y is 1. Okay. Whole divided by cos square a plus y. Correct. Basically, I use the formula gf dash minus fg dash by g square. If you uh, simplify this, it becomes minus cos a plus y sine y plus sine a plus y cos y by cos square a plus y. Just rearrange the term in a proper way so that we can identify that, oh, it is the compound angle identity. It is the formula of sine a minus b. Okay. So if you look at this expression, this is nothing but your a, b, a, b. So sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. And what is that? Sine a minus b. Sine a minus b, right? So sine a minus b. Okay. This is your dx by dy. So y y gets cancelled. So it is sine a by cos square a plus y. So dy by dx is the reciprocal. Guys, remember this. dy by dx is the reciprocal of dx by dy. So that is going to be cos square a plus y by sine a. Oh, yes. Okay. Simple. Now, a couple of things to be noted over here. So I'll, I'll write it down in a box structure here. Important, something very important. dy by dx and dx by dy are reciprocals of one another. Okay. But d2y by dx square is not the reciprocal of d2x by dy square. Please don't have this misconception. The double derivative do not follow the same relation as the single derivatives follow. Okay. So what is the actual relationship between d2y by dx square and d2x by dy square that we'll discuss next year when we are doing higher order derivatives. Okay. Meanwhile, is this problem clear? Any doubt, any question with respect to this? So there was an element of uh, trigonometry also involved in this. Yes, that sir. Is take care, right? Let's move on. Next question. Here comes another problem for you. If f of x is log of log x to the base x, please note that this inside log has a base of e, but outside log has a base of x. So this is your e. Find f dash x at at x equal to e. By the way, many books will also write it as find f dash of e. Dash e. Okay, that means the same thing as finding this. So after differentiating, put x as e. Tell me the answer. Uh, again, let's have just three minutes for it, not more than that. So was it derivative of log a to the power b? Like log a to the base b? Very, very good question. Very good question. See, derivative of log x to the base e, this is only 1 by x. Okay. This, is, this formula is not valid if your base is not e. But since you have asked what will happen if my base is something like a. Okay. Then first we have to convert this log x to the base a as log x to the base e divided by log a to the base e by use of change of base formula. This is called the change of base formula. Okay. Once you have done this, 1 by log a to the base e is just like a constant. So you can just pull it out and it's the derivative of log x to the base e, which is actually 1 by x. So the answer is 1 by x log a to the base e. Oh, yes, sir. Does this help you? Uh, 
venkat yes sir now proceed with this problem yes sir one second now starting the problem now Uh, one second, sir. Getting it. Yeah, yeah. So one. No, one is not the right answer. Ah. Uh. Okay. So let me just attempt this. So first of all, when you're finding the derivative of log x. Okay, first we'll change the base of it. We'll write it as log e of log x to the base e by log x to the base. E. Okay, so better to write this in terms of ln because too much of writing work is involved. So ln of ln x by ln x. Okay, so think as if your problem was this. Now, if you want to differentiate it, first the overall structure is there is a a quotient rule involved one function let's say u is divided by another function let's say v so we all know the formula of quotient rule okay uv dash is v u dash minus u v dash by v square okay let us try to fill in these uh, spaces over here so v will be nothing but ln x u dash u dash means derivative of ln of ln x so for this we'll use chain rule so read this as ln something first ln something is 1 by something into remove this ln from your mind then you see ln x ln x derivative is 1 by x okay put proper brackets once it is done just close the bracket so these two are done now u u is going to be ln of ln x 
into derivative of v is 1 by x whole divided by v square v square is ln x the whole square okay once this is done you just have to put your value of x as e okay so you have to calculate this at x equal to e so we normally put a dash line and put x equal to e it suggests that you have to substitute e in place of x so ln e is 1 we all know that 1 by ln e is also 1 1 by x is 1 by e minus ln of ln e ln of ln ln of 1 will be 0 so this will be 0 so we don't have to bother about this term anymore divided by ln e is again 1 1 square right so if you have confusion how this becomes 0 ln e is 1 so ln of 1 is actually 0 So the answer is this goes for zero. This is one by e by one. That is answer is one by e. Is it fine? Any questions? Please ask me. So it was a use of a quotient rule along with uh, the use of chain rule in between. So remember, all these rules normally they work at in tandem to solve a given problem. It's not like a question is completely solved by a product rule or a quotient rule or a chain rule all these rules work together depending upon how is your function structured and what are the functions involved in that structure can we move on to the next one or you want to copy this done sir others others i am sure they are open with their bio book or computer book <laughs> anyway, I don't mind. Exams are also important. I was actually under the impression that you have maths exam tomorrow. That's <laughs> why. Else, I would have you know just kept a, a session little later on. Anyways, so next is y is one plus x by one factorial, x square by two factorial, x cube by three factorial, and so on till x to the power n by n factorial. So that dy by dx is this. So we do the same thing. You look up in the evening. <laughs> Class eleventh, first semester is always a very important exam. You know why? Because it gives sometimes it gives shocker to many of you. Okay, you people become very shocked after this exam because three uh, hours paper and new topics are there. This, this is a life changing moment for me. It was at least a life changing moment. Oh. first uh, exam of my class 11th was the big shock of my life from 96 i went to 69 <laughs> so <laughs> after that i realized no boss this is not you know class 10th anymore so i had to change my gear and and you know i gave everything then second semester was good i ended up in 90s and all <laughs> so already change your gear to sixth gear <laughs> first i went to first year <laughs> four fours and then slowly i started you know yes, it's a football game it is not the same as class 10 it, it is a continuous study game you can't study one day or two day and you know do well in it yeah that's true adhi <laughs> <laughs> is saying maths test already changed my life good to know that viraj not to look back This is a good learning for you. Press on the pedal and go full throttle. So this thing is intuitively feeling true, like dy by dx minus y. Yeah, I know that. I know that. But you have to prove it normally. Yeah, it's simple. It's not. It's not difficult.
Okay. Yes, sir. Done. Awesome. Yes, sir. Okay. So let's discuss this quickly. So dy by dx will be nothing but derivative of one will be zero. Derivative of x by one factorial will be one. This will be two x by two factorial, which is x. This is three x square by three factorial. By the way, let me tell you, three x square by three factorial is as good as saying x square by two factorial. Factorial. Similarly, the derivative of x to the power uh, x to the power four by four factorial is four x cube by four factorial, which is x cube by three factorial. So you'll get x cube by three factorial. Can I say this trend will go on till x to the power n minus one by n minus one factorial? Correct. So had you added one more term, it would have actually become your y. So if you add x to the power n by n factorial in both the places. So basically, I'm adding x to the power n by n factorial in both the places, and this term would have actually become a y, right? So dy by dx plus x to the power n by n factorial is actually y, which implies, which implies dy by dx minus y plus x to the power n by n factorial is equal to zero. That's true. Okay, no question with respect to this. Very simple. You just had to realize this part. Sorry, that will be the answer. Good. Can I move on now? Yes, sir. Simple question. Just to test, uh, uh, test your uh, same rule. Find dy by dx when y is sine of x square plus one. Oh, just a ten-second problem. Yes, sir. Done. What's the answer? Cos of x square plus one into two x. Cos of x square plus one into derivative of x square plus one is two x. Absolutely. So two x cos of x square plus one. Simple. Oh yeah, looks good that way. Let's have this one. It's y is under root of log of sine of x square by three minus one. Find dy by dx. Uh, sir, by the way, uh, the limits question, right? I went outside. Limits question? I went outside, right? Seven twenty nine cube, something like that. X bar seven twenty nine minus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still didn't get that, sir. I'm, I'll try it again one last time, and then I'll ask you for solution. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> Sir, I think I got it. I'm not. You got it? Yeah. Vidyuta. Uh, one second. Yeah. Uh, last part done. Uh, yes, sir. Done. Uh, yeah. Let's discuss something to the power half. Something to the power half is one by, by two. two. The whole thing again. Yeah, the whole thing. Okay, into forget the root. Log something is one by something. Into forget log also. Sine something is cos something. Forget sine also, and this is going to be two x by three. Simple one. Next.
A here is a constant. Done, sir. Can you Done, sir. Yes, sir. First, log something is one by something. Okay. Into. Now, once log is gone, one plus this, you have to differentiate it simultaneously. So, x derivative is one. For derivative of under root of x square plus y square, you have to again use a chain rule, so which is one by two under root x a square plus x square into just multiply this to this term okay, not with one okay into derivative of a square plus x square which is zero plus two x okay let us simplify this so it becomes one by x under root a square plus x square and this will become one and this two and this two will get cancelled so x by under root of a square plus x square just take an lcm over here Just take an LCM over here. It will become x plus under root a square plus x square by a under root a square plus x square. This will get cancelled off. This and this gets cancelled off, leaving you with the answer of 1 by under root a square plus x square. By the way, later on you will learn in class 12 that when we integrate 1 by a square plus x square, the answer that we write is log of mod x plus under root a square plus x square. Okay, so this is a well-known result actually, which you'll learn in class 12th also. Yes, sir. Any questions so far? No, sir. Sir, will we do a bit of difference uh, integration also, like for learning? I think I've already shared the videos with you. Uh, videos, yeah, but like like this. Yeah, yeah, I see. Once you're... Uh, Semester exams are over in in your class 11. Mm -hmm. like month of holidays, we'll do a lot of things. The summer holidays or this one? Summer. Dashara. Summer. Summer. Oh, okay. Like, can, can we just do a bit because, of integration? Because the number of chapters are huge. We, we, we yet have to do complex numbers. We have to do conic sections. We have to use binomial, sequence series, statistics, mathematical reasoning. Permutation. Permutation combination, of course. A lot of chapters are there. Okay, sir. Dhira likes permutation combination. <laughs> sir, this is just a lot of product rule, right? Yeah. <laughs> but you have to be smart here. You don't have to use actually the product rule. First, yeah, simplify yeah. this. That's my trick. That's the that's my hint.
Um, sir, won't some of them get cancelled? Like, become zero? How? Uh, pi by 4. But you don't have to put pi by 4 initially, Dheeraj. That is a mistake. You don't have to put the value and then differentiate. You have to differentiate and then put the value. Okay. Yeah, even after differentiating it, uh, sometimes it's caused like 8x. Okay, let it cancel. No worries. Yeah. Uh, oh, sir. Yes. Uh, like we have a formula and trigger, right? Cos x is sine to n a by two n sine a. Absolutely, that was what I was looking for in this. Okay. Uh, oh. Just now, I, I it came into my head. I, I I've been doing yeah. something and all. See. Just. Okay. Yeah. See, if you would have practiced trigonometry very well, you know that if your angles are in GP with a G a ratio of two, see these are in GP. Geometric progression with a common ratio of two, then your life becomes very simple. You, you can just initiate a chain reaction over here. See how this chain reaction works. Multiply and divide with two sin x. Okay. So when you multiply and divide with two sin x, what does two sin x cos x become? Sin two x. Sin two x. So may I erase that with your permission? Yes, sir. Which one? This term only? Oh, this. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. So it becomes uh, sin 2x. Correct. Now just provide it with a 2 here. So, and provide it with a 2 here. What does this term become? Sin 4x. Isn't it? 2 sin theta cos theta is always sin 2 theta. So, hmm. two sin 2x and cos 2x will become a sin 4x. So, you don't have to mug up the formula also. This this is sin 4x. Now again put a 2 here, again put a 2 here. What does this term become now? Sin 8x. Sin 8x, absolutely. Sin 8x. So let me write sin 8x. Again put a 2 here, 2 here. What does it become? Sin 16x. Sin 16x. Again, put a 2 here, 2 here. What does this become? Sin 32x. So ultimately, your answer is sin 32x by 32 sin x. 32 sin x. Now, ultimately, the question is asking find the derivative of this function at x equal to pi by 4. Can we not do that? Let's do that. Tell me the answer once we're done. Oh, yes, sir. What is sine pi by 4? 1 by root 2. 1 by 32, you can just keep it outside. Don't involve it. Oh, yes, sir. Square. So, sine x cos 32x into 32 minus sine 32x into cos x by sine square x.
this is 1 by root 2 okay uh, cos 8 pi cos 8 pi is 1 uh, yeah okay but sin 8 pi is 0 by sin square is 1 by 2 so your answer is 1 by this will be 1 by 16 into 32 by root 2 which is actually root 2. root 2 So uh, no need to use product rule for one, two, three, four, five, five times. That would be too lengthy. So you just use a simplification of this. So it's it's a more of a question on trigonometry rather than anything else. Can we move on now? One second, sir. Sure. One by yes, sir. Done, sir. This I'm sure you'll be able to do it. This I'm sure you'll be able to do it. Let's do this one. If y is under root of one minus x by one plus x, prove that one minus x square dy by dx plus y is equal to zero. Hmm. This is called. Differential equation based questions, which will be asked a lot in your school exams also. This is actually a differential equation, which we learn in class twelve. This is called a differential equation. Oh. Differential equation. Sir, is it zero? Ah, equal to zero. You have to prove it. Oh yeah. Uh, one second. No, 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 no. Not happy.
मैं चल चलने की कोशिश Uh, one second, sir. Yeah. Got it. Almost, almost. Uh, uh, the last last step, sir. Last. Go sure.
See, first of all, you do this thing, Venkat. So multiply and divide with 1 minus x. So 1 minus x square and this becomes 1 minus x square. Correct? This becomes uh, y is equal to 1 minus x by under root of 1 minus x square. Correct? Hmm. Okay. Now, we'll do one thing. I will do take under root of 1 minus x square on the other side. And this is 1 minus x. Okay? Yes, sir. So far, so good. No problem in this. No, sir. Okay. Now, what I'll do is we'll differentiate both sides with respect to x, treating this as two functions. Okay. So we'll use product rule over here. So under root of 1 minus x square into dy by dx plus y into derivative of this will be 1 by 2 under root 1 minus x square into minus 2x. And this side will have a negative 1. Hmm. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Okay. So this two will get oh. cancelled. This two will get cancelled. So we'll have under root of 1 minus x square dy by dx minus x by y under root 1 minus x square is equal to negative 1. Hmm. Correct? Yes, sir. Yes or no? Okay. Yeah. So now we'll do one thing. Uh, we'll multiply throughout with under root 1 minus x square. So this becomes 1 minus x square. This becomes minus xy and this becomes minus under root 1 minus x square. Yeah. Correct? Yes or no? Yes, sir. What do you want to prove? This plus y is equal to 0. Correct? Oh. So, if you take this term, it will be x, y. Okay. Add a y to both the sides. Hmm. Correct? So, y into 1 plus x minus under root 1 minus x square. Let's try to evaluate this. y is under root of y is under root of 1 minus x by 1 plus x into 1 plus x. Correct? If you, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. If you introduce this within the root sign, it will become under root of 1 minus x, 1 plus x into 1 plus x the whole square. Basically, I'm introducing this term within the under root sign. These two terms will get cancelled. Yes, sir. We'll be left with under root 1 minus x square minus under root 1 minus x square, which is obviously 0. That means 1 uh, minus x square dy by dx plus y will be equal to 0. Hence proved. Oh, yeah. Okay. Just, just so a second, sir. This is the type of questions we'll come across because, see, the methods are very simple. Uh, derivative differentiation is a very conventional process. Yeah. Of rules, you just have to follow. So how can they make the question a little bit more challenging? Only by making such kind of questions. Okay. Yes, sir. Just a second, sir. This Dheeraj Vidyata. So can you scroll up a bit? Sure. See, my target was to create that 1 minus x square dy by dx somehow. That's uh, uh, yeah. Fine, make it. 
know once you're done so that we can move on yes sir just a second Done, sir. Okay, by the way, this is slightly blurred image. This is one plus x to the power one by four. Okay. Y is equal to plus x to the power one by four. I'll write it again. Minus one, sir. Answer. Yeah. Oh, that was too fast. Let's check. Oh, this is one by four inside. Yeah. So you club this up. What does it become? Yes, sir. One minus x half. And you club this up. It becomes one minus x. And you divide by dx is minus one. Done. Yeah. <laughs> Next. Uh, so one plus x, one plus x square, one plus x four, one plus x to the power two to the power n. Find dy by dx at x equal to zero.
Oh, one second, sir. Getting it. Yeah. Two to the power n plus two to the power two n. Okay, let's check. So first of all, in this question, we can set in a chain reaction. Chain reaction by multiplying and dividing with one minus x. Okay, so these two will club up to give you one minus x square. So let me write it down over here. Can I make the changes here itself, or do you want me to write for every step? Uh, here itself, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, no worries, I can make the change here. One minus x square. Okay, this. Okay, let me copy this. <laughs> and one minus x is there in the denominator again. These two terms will club up to become one minus x to the power four. So now I'm making the change here itself. One minus x to the power four. These two terms will club up to become one minus x to the power eight. And can I say if this trend continues, if this trend continues, what will happen till you reach the last term? One minus x to the power two n. One minus x to the power two n. To the power n square, right? Yeah. N square will become this into two, correct? So this will become n plus one if I'm not wrong. Whole divided by one minus x. So ultimately, this given expression, this unique expression, is actually this term, correct? Uh, for differentiation of this, we can use our quotient rule. Let's use our quotient rule for this. So dy by dx will be nothing minus x. Derivative of this will be zero minus two to the power n plus one into x into two to the power n plus one minus one. Minus one minus x to the power two to the power n plus one into derivative of one minus x is minus one whole divided by one minus x the whole square. Now you have been asked to put x as zero. Correct. So we want the derivative of this function at x equal to zero. So let's see what happens when you put x as zero. No. This becomes one minus zero. This becomes zero minus. This entire thing will collapse. Correct. This will become one minus zero into minus one divided by one minus zero the whole square. Okay, so ultimately giving you the answer as one by one square, which is nothing but one. No n will be there in your answer. Oh yes, sir. I found it at, uh, at n equal to one. That's my mistake. Okay. Next term. Next question. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If x under root one my one plus y plus y under root one plus x is zero, prove that dy by dx is minus one by x plus one the whole square. Looks somewhat like the product rule. Thank you. 
Any idea, anyone, Venkat? Uh, kind of, sir, but like, it's not helping me. Okay. What about Viraj and Vidyata? This is actually your NCRT question, by the way. No, then wait, sir. I'll try. NCRT question not able to solve. Uh, no, sir. Okay. okay. So, first thing we'll do is we'll write this as negative y under root 1 plus x. Okay. We'll square both the sides. Okay. Let's expand it. Let's take uh, x square, y square on one side. Factorize it. So I can say x plus y is negative x y. Okay. So x plus y is negative x y. You can find the derivative. You can make y the subject of the formula. So y one plus x is minus x. So y is minus x by one plus x. So dy by dx is going to be, use the quotient rule, 1 plus x into minus 1. 
uh, minus of minus x, which is plus x into 1 by 1 plus x the whole square. So if you open this up, it becomes minus 1 by 1 plus x the whole square. Proved. Yeah. <laughs> Next. Sorry, uh, did you want did you want to copy that or? Uh, yes, sir. Just a second. Okay. One second. I'll just paste the question here, and then I'll move back. Done, sir. Yeah. Try this out. It is given that cos x by 2, cos x by 4, cos x by 8 and so on till infinity is sin x by x. Then find the sum of 1 by 2 square, sec square x by 2, 1 by 2 to the power 4, sec square x by 4. If you want subsequent terms, I can provide it. Uh, 1 by 2 to the power 6 secant square x by 6 and so on. x by This goes all the way till infinity. Now you must be wondering how does derivative feature in our air because you don't see a derivative term anywhere in this question. But that's the trick actually. But why is that sin x by x given? Just to make your life easy. They would have, if they wanted, they would have not even given that term. Oh. I want you to use that expression, actually. That's why. Wait, sir. This looks like product rule again. Like, ultra product rule. But, I don't know. It's not taking bad.
any idea how to proceed so i'll give you a hint take log on both the sides and differentiate log yeah log to the base e oh take log on both the sides and differentiate try that out okay bye once again sir then One second, sir. Uh, doing sir. Uh, no, sir, not getting. Okay, let's see. So, if you take log, it becomes ln cos x by two. Hmm. This side will become ln sine x minus ln x. Yeah. If you differentiate this. Uh, what is the derivative of ln of cos x by two? Which rule will you use? Uh, chain rule. Chain rule. So it's one by cos x by two into minus sine x by two into half. Yeah. This term will be what? Uh, one, one by cos x, x, x by four minus, minus x by, x by four, four into one by four. Into one by four. Keep on doing this. Here it will become one by sine x x into cos x. Minus one by x. Yeah. So this term is minus half tan x by two. This term is minus one by four tan x by four. Next term would have been minus one by eight tan x by eight, and so on. Ooh. This term would have become cot x minus one by x. Okay. Differentiate both sides again with respect to x. Oh. So differentiate. Again with respect to x, this becomes minus half secant square x by two into half again. So two square will come. Hmm. This will become oh. minus one by four secant square x by four into one by four again, which is four square. Now four square is actually two to the power four also. Okay. So do you start realizing that we have started getting these terms? Okay. And this side will be minus cosecant square x plus one by x square. Just take the negative sign, just cancel out the negative sign from both the sides. So half and half secant square x by two, sorry, half square secant square x by two plus one by two to the power four secant square x by four, and so on will be nothing but cosecant square x minus half x square. So this becomes your answer. Is that fine?
So could you scroll down a bit? Hmm. Oh, this is nice. Uh, sir, just for additional information, can you do differentiation of uh, X bar, X and all today? Yeah, yeah, why not? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, just a second, is it done? Done, sir. Y dash means dy by dx, okay? Hmm. This y dash, it means dy by dx. The y dash by y is 1 by x times that expression. ax square plus bx plus c. Uh, degree of denominator is always one more than degree of numerator. Yeah. Is that of any use? Sir? <laughs> oh, you are thinking of partial fractions. Yeah, yeah, and not exactly partial fraction. Just thinking. Okay, try it. Try it out. Yes, sir. Try, don't worry. You don't learn when you look at the solution. You only learn when you struggle with the question. Yes, sir.
Any idea? Shall give you a hint. Yeah, hint, sir. Start combining these two terms. See what will you get. Oh. Oh. X by X minus C. Oh, yeah. oh. Yeah. If you take this common, you'll get uh, C plus X minus C, which is X by X minus C. Correct. So let me just remove this unnecessary thing. Okay. Now try to combine these two terms. See what do you get? You can take X by X minus C common also. You'll get B by X minus B plus one. So yeah. Ooh. Which is x by x minus b. By x minus b. So it becomes x square by x minus b x minus c. Ooh. Okay. Now take x square by x minus b x minus c common. You'll get a by x minus a plus one. Can I say it will result into x cubed by x minus a, x minus b, x minus c? Yes, sir. Now, take log on both the sides. So ln y is equal to ln x cube. x cube minus ln that. Correct ln x cube is like 3 ln x. Right? Yeah. On both the sides. So 1 by y dy by dx is equal to 3 by x minus 1 by x minus a minus 1 by x minus b minus 1 by x minus c. Okay. Ooh. Now, let's see what is asked in the expression. They have asked you to get this. Okay. So what I'll do here. I'll write this as 1 by x yeah you need to get this term right 1 by x a by 1 a minus x b by b minus x and c by c minus x okay so first of all uh, 3 by x and I'll make it plus 1 by a minus x okay plus 1 by b minus x plus 1 by c minus x 
correct so this is nothing but y dash by y who okay. yeah now how do i get to that desired expression uh, contribute one by x to each of the others okay how will that uh, yes uh, uh, one by x plus one by x plus one by x uh-huh uh, uh plus one by a minus six. i'm not sure if that works just trying sir not sure it might work yeah just try it out after that just a second sir just a second sir mm -hmm. Yeah, you get. Um, oh no. Yes, sir, you got it. B by x into b minus x plus c by x into c minus c minus x. One by x comma. Yes, sir, you got it. You got it. So yes, basically, sir. you have to distribute one by x to each one of them. Yes, sir. <laughs> Okay, so this will give you a minus x plus x by x a minus x. And again, b minus x plus x by x b minus x. And again, c minus x plus x by x c minus x. Correct. So x x x x x goes off. Uh, and then one by x common. Take one by x is common, so it'll become a by a minus x, b by b minus x, and c by c minus x. That is the desired expression. Who super question? Yes, sir. One more question. Easy. Okay. That was a cute problem. <laughs> <laughs> This is f of x is mod of ln of mod x. Find f dash x. Which of the following four options?
Uh, sir, how will mod function affect the process of finding derivative? It will affect it a lot. If you just try to find the graph of this and see how is this function defined. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. get uh, one second sir sure 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 The figuring it out or two three months and all uh, taking some time to figure stuff out one second just redefine try to redefine the function uh, okay. without having mod try to write down the function uh, that's just an x yeah, just LNX, what type of manifestation will you see in that? Uh, one is when the graph, like y is equal to mod f of x and y is equal to f of mod x, both the things are combined into this. See, it, it's very, you know, uh, easy to come to this uh, question from a graphical point of view. See, how, how will I do it graphically, see? First of all, if you draw the graph of LNX, 
LNX graph is like this. Correct? Now let's go step by step. This is the graph of y equal to ln x. Y is equal to ln x. Correct. So if you now, take a mod on x, what will happen? Uh, if you take a mod on x, the graph just gets mirror image about y axis. Y axis, yes, sir. Correct. If you take a mod on everything, what will happen? The part uh, of the graph down will comes up. Will come up like this. Correct. So you're retaining the R uh, what? No, I'm not retaining the downward. Down part, I'll remove it. Ah, okay. Okay, now see, this itself will tell you a lot of things. This point, first of all, is 1, right? X is 1 and this is minus Yeah, one. yes, sir. If you see this blue part, uh, yellow part, this yellow part is still a part of LNX graph, isn't it? Uh, yes, sir. Would you agree with me? Yes, sir. Okay. This is the part which is a graph of negative LNX. Negative LNX. Oh, yeah. Technically. Yeah. Yes, sir. This part is the graph of y is equal to negative ln negative x because it's the mirror image of this white part. Is a mirror image? Hai ye. Correct? Yes, sir. When you're taking a mirror image, you just replace the sign of x with the minus x. What about this? This is the part of the graph y is equal to ln negative ln x ln minus x. x. Correct. So the definition is well, you know, understood over here. The definition is. When you are below minus one, when you were x, when your x is less than or equal to minus one, you are actually following the graph of ln of minus x. Yes or no? Yes or no? Uh, when, yes, sir. When you are from x to zero, not including zero, you are following the graph of minus ln minus x. Correct. When you are from 0 to 1, uh, excuse me, 0 will not be included. 0 to 1, you are following the graph of minus ln x. Yeah, oh, beauty. And when you are above 1, but, uh, normal ln x only. ln x only, right, absolutely. No doubt about this redefinition? No, sir. Correct. Now, let us differentiate this entire thing. All I have to do is find the derivative of each one of them. For example, here, what will be the answer? I'm sure it's 1 by x only. Ch try chain rule. 1 by minus x into minus 1. 1 by minus x into minus 1, which is 1 by x only. This will be minus of minus of 1 by minus x into minus 1, which is minus x, minus 1 by x. Correct. This also will be minus 1 by x. I'm sorry. And this will be 1 by x. Now, let us try to see what is happening in this. If you see clearly, whenever your x is less than minus 1 or greater than 1, which is like saying mod x is greater than 1, your answer for the derivative is 1 by x. And when you are between these two zones, these two zones means you are between minus 1 to 1. Okay, Of course, excluding 0. Of course, excluding 0. Your answer is minus 1 by x. So I can say mod x less than 1. Your answer is minus 1 by x. Let us see what does the option say. Oh, by the way, we cannot include 1 and minus 1. Why? You know why? Because there's a corner getting formed. Remember, in the corners, the function is not differentiable. So at these points, I have to remove it. Okay, so basically it becomes less than or greater than. So now look at the options. The option says 1 by x when x is not equal to 0. This is not right. It says 1 by x when x is greater than 1. So let me check. 1 by x when x is mod x is greater than 1 and minus 1 by x when mod x is less than 1. This is the right option. 
this cannot be there this cannot be there so option number 2 is the right option is that clear are you guys there with me yes sir any questions how how we solve this question this question was actually not difficult had you known how to redefine the function and for redefining the function it's good to take help of the graph especially when multiple mods are involved Uh, this problem. If log of tan x to the base of sin x is y, find dy by dx at pi by four. Uh, sir, what is the standard of these questions? C, D, J, E, whatever. What? Ah, uh, they are slightly less than C, D, C, S, C, uh, J, E, and all. Will not ask you finding the derivative. Right now, you are learning this chapter. That's why you know I am giving these questions. J, E will always incorporate a multi-conceptual question. Oh. Two, three concepts uh, simultaneously will be tested. Oh yes, sir. Just like the previous one. Previous one was the J, E main question. Oh, then nice. Yeah. This is this is not. This is a super simple. Ah uh, yeah. Yes. One second. Sir.
One second, sir. Wait a getting something. This is again, sir, almost done right. here and there.
Uh, no, sir. It became too lengthy unnecessarily. Okay. Did you get this first? Hmm. Correct. Hmm. Ellen of tan x by ln of sin x. Yeah. Apply quotient rule for this. So ln of sin x into derivative of ln tan x is 1 by tan x into secant square x. Yeah. ln of tan x, derivative of this is 1 by sin x into cos x by ln sin x the whole square. Okay. Now put x as 5 by 4. This becomes ln 1 by root 2. Okay. This becomes uh, 2 by 1. Four. This becomes ln 1 which is 0. So everything will become 0 after this. By ln 1 by root 2 the whole square. This and this will go off. So it becomes 2 divided by ln you can write this as negative half of 2. So that is minus 4 by ln 2. Option uh, 3 is correct. Uh, what was Wendy in this? I know my uh, approach after the, I messed up somewhere like simplification. y is equal to this, then prove that, then find the value of 1 plus x squared divided by dx plus xy plus 1. Uh, one second, sir. Sure, sure.
Uh, sir, just curious. Yeah. For the uh, find f of x is equal to mod of ln of mod x, right? Yeah. Uh, was it possible to solve that without the graph? Yeah, why not? Uh, how, sir? Uh, do you want me to do it after this or right now? Yes, sir. After this. Okay. Should I help you with this? Uh, just a hint, sir. Can you give? You differentiate both sides with respect to x. Yes, sir. Done. Use product rule here. Use chain rule over here. Yeah, that I did. So into derivative of this will be 1 by 2 into 2x. Okay. Plus under root of x square plus 1 into dy by dx. Derivative of the right side will be 1 by into derivative of this term will be 1 by 2 under root x square plus 1 into 2x minus 1. 2 to 1. This also 2 to 1. So xy by this 
This will be x under root x square plus 1 by under root x square plus 1. I'm sure you would have realized that this term and this term can be cancelled with a minus one here. Hmm. Okay. Multiply throughout. Multiply throughout with x square plus one. So this will become xy. This will become x square plus one dy by dx. This will become minus one. So x square plus 1 dy by dx plus xy plus 1 is actually 0. I think this is what we need. Yeah. This is what we need for so option 1 is correct, 0. Ooh, one second, sir. Yes, I've done. Done? Okay. So now I'll solve that question without a loss. See, first of all, log of anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. For two cases when that, uh, but then it's E, right? Yes, we have to first take into account what happens when x is greater than 0, what happens when x is less than 0. Yes, sir. When x is greater than 0, this function becomes mod log x and this function becomes mod log minus. Yes, Correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, ln x is known to be negative when x is less than 1, right? Yeah. Okay. So, greater than 0 but less than 1. I can say like this greater than zero but less than one. This function will behave as minus ln x. Yeah. Correct. And greater than one, the function will behave as ln x. Ln x itself. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. yes, sir. Now, less than zero, but less than zero, let's say this is the graph. If you see log of minus x graph, this is the graph. Hmm. Less than zero, but before one. Hmm. Less than zero, but before one. X is negative, right? This is already negative term. So negative into negative is a positive term. Yes, sir. Correct. So can I say between zero and one, less than hmm. zero, but greater than one. Correct. This function will behave as negative of log of negative x because if you take a quantity which is between minus 1 and 0 let's say I take a minus half yes sir log of minus of minus half is 0.5 oh yeah and log 0 0.5 is a negative quantity so it will give you negative yes, sir. 0 0.5 correct oh yeah isn't it like saying negative negative log negative x Oh, yes, sir. And if x is less than minus 1, this will behave as positive log of negative x. Oh, yeah. And now you can differentiate it and get your answer. That's basically instead of taking gra uh, uh, graph, you're taking values. Like, values. Uh, oh, okay. Got it, sir. You okay. If y is equal to sine inverse by under root of 1 minus x square, then 1 plus x square dy by dx is equal to? Yeah. Ha, yes. Let's hope that we can solve this.
Wait, sir. Uh, I hope I'm getting this. Okay. Uh, one plus x y options there. Two. Yes, yes. Option two is absolutely correct. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Okay. You want me to do this? Uh, others. Just to, check, just to check whether what whatever you have done is the right way. Okay. Yes, sir. So we can apply. Transposed. Oh yeah. Okay. We can apply product rule over here. Derivative of this will be 1 by 2 under root 1 minus x square into minus 2x. This is 1 by under root 1 minus x square. Okay. So 2 and this will get cancelled off. Multiply throughout with 1 minus x square. So 1 minus x square divided by dx. This will become a minus xy and this will become a 1. That means 1 minus x square divided by dx is equal to 1. One thing, I'll take, I'll take, I'll take. Uh. Okay, take it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Oh. Did I that also? If f of x is x plus 1 by 2x plus 1 by 2x plus 1 by 2x plus 1 by 2x, all the way till infinity. Find the value of f50 into f dash 50. Yes. How do you differentiate this? That's the trick. If you know how to differentiate, everything is easy. <laughs> yeah. After this problem, we'll take a break and then we'll start with KVPY, okay? Uh, yes, sir. And derivative of x power x, you know, after KVPY also, if you're free. Hello? KVPY only, I'll tell you, don't worry. Uh, okay, sir. So nothing is working in this question. Nothing is working. Okay. 
see here uh, you have to observe a pattern here you can see that after 1 plus 2x this part is getting repeated right hmm this part which is actually also this part is getting repeated yes sir now see can i write f of x minus x as 1 by this term? right yeah okay hmm Now, the same term here can i say this is actually f of x minus x itself oh yeah f of x minus x is actually 1 by 2x plus f of x minus x Hmm. Which means f of x minus x is one by f of x plus x. Yes, sir. Correct. Right. Cross multiply. So f square x minus x square is actually one. Square x. So yeah. F square x is one plus x square. Okay. Now let's differentiate both sides with respect to x. What is the derivative of f square x with respect to x? Uh, two f of x. x. Into d f of x by d x, which is actually x only, right? Yes, sir. That is equal to two. X. Two two gets cancelled. Now put x as fifty. Done. This is the answer. Oh, uh, once sir, let me just process that. Process. f of x oh wow yes sir we also good you yeah, also awesome. yes sir okay let's take a break for some time can you see the screen now yes sir so let's say we have a quadratic with us x square minus m minus 3x plus m equal to 0 okay m is some real number m is some real number okay uh my question to you is first find the values of m We write it here. Find the values of m such that this quadratic equation has got real and distinct root. Okay. I'm sure you can do this. Yes, sir. Write out. Just a second, sir. I'm coming. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. I'm back. Uh, from minus infinity to one and nine to infinity. Uh, open interval, close interval. Uh, all open. All open. Very good. So you would have got this. You just did b square minus four ac greater. Four ac greater than zero. Yes. So your answer here would be m should belong to minus infinity to one union nine to union nine to infinity. Okay. Yes, sir. Next question. Good. I'll give you a series of question. Okay. So almost thirteen, fourteen questions. I'll give you in the same thing. Okay. Oh, yes, sir. Tell me the value of values of m or interval of m such that the roots are equal. Equal to zero then. Equal, equal. 
चलो यू पास दिस ऑल्सो नेक्स्ट इज यूर रूट आर नॉट इक्वल सॉरी नॉट रियल माइनस वन टू सॉरी वन टू नाइन ओपन वन टू नाइन ओपन वेरी गुड as you move on the complication will increase okay yes sir next is the roots are opposite in sign does that the roots are opposite in sign uh same as real and distinct but hopefully not one second sir opposite in sign hmm. think carefully yes sir Yeah, how do we analyze for this? Think that's the that's the thinking part, right? Oh. Without actually finding the roots, how do you find this condition that the roots are opposite in sign? uh depends on where they cut the x axis like uh, left side of y uh, y axis or right side of y axis one will be left one will be right then only it will be opposite right yes that's what uh, that's what should happen mm -hmm. so if that is happening okay that means you have a oh vertex uh one thing there Oh, one second. I think I figured it out. That's the fourth quadrant. So just tell this if this is right. The vertex should run in the fourth quadrant. Not necessarily. Oh. It is much easier method to do it. You don't have to figure out where the vertex lies. Just by using the coefficients, you can figure it out. Is it? Yeah. How, how sir? <laughs> okay. If I say both the roots are opposite in sign, can I say product of the roots will be negative? Yes, sir. And that means M, which is nothing but product of the root C by yeah. A. Yeah. Yeah. product of the root is c by a, right so c by a here is m right so m should be negative oh at the same time m must belong to minus yeah. infinity to 1 union 9 to infinity because it must be real also yeah uh, so it, it doesn't have m correct so your answer would yes, be m should belong to uh, less than less than 0 means it is well under this zone so it is minus infinity to zero oh okay 
yes sir getting the point yes sir wasn't it easy <laughs> okay. it was same yeah. question same question now the fifth question is they should be equal in magnitude but opposite in sign equal in magnitude but opposite in sign okay uh equal in magnitude opposite i think it is one second sir so 3 wrong huh <laughs> think carefully think carefully oh okay there is m is equal to 3 is that wrong wrong oh Yeah. Oh, three will be minus and plus two. Oh, wait. the agenda is to make it into a perfect square that's the thing but that no So let's substitute and see. So sum of roots alpha beta uh, alpha equal to alpha zero. Sum so sum of roots should be zero, right? Yeah. So minus b by a. So m minus three by one is equal to zero. but at the same time it must be real also so it should lie in this interval and 3 doesn't lie in this interval interval yeah so the answer is no such m exists oh that way okay <laughs> please you need 3 for any condition to be fulfilled root hmm. must exist first of all right yes sir right before you study in some school you should be alive first of all correct <laughs> <laughs> so first you have to make sure that this condition is met and then whatever condition is coming you have to take the overlap with it yes sir so this was actually yeah. a googly question <laughs> okay <laughs> next one tell me the condition says that both roots are positive so both roots are positive uh same sign okay oh, what so can you just go up a bit go oh, this is the upward part i cannot go up this is a you want to go to previous page oh, yeah yes sir Mm. Oh, opposite in sign was discovered. 
both are positive okay sir realize uh just a second sir Um, nine to infinity. Nine to infinity. Nine to infinity is absolutely correct. Ah, yeah. Yes, sir. Excluding nine, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Both open. Okay. Now both roots are negative. Ah, uh, minus infinity to one. No. Oh, that didn't work. Oh wait. If uh, uh, sir, no such m exists because if both are negative, uh, that means um, sum should be negative and product is positive. Correct, correct, correct. Nothing, nothing. Minus alpha minus beta. Sir, no such M exists. No such M exists. Okay. Hey, what did you do for making it both negative? Uh, true. And thing like that, and both are positive in nine to infinity. So you got, that interval is gone, and now we have the thing only from minus infinity to one. See, can I say both is negative is possible only when sum is negative and the product is positive? Yes, sir. Correct. I did that. Along with the fact that discriminant must be less than 
equal to zero because it can have a negative and sorry greater, greater than, than equal to zero. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because it can have equal also and negative also. Uh, like zero zero. No no minus two minus two like that. Oh yeah. Okay. So alpha plus beta is minus b by which is this correct? Yeah. Correct. This should be less than zero. Alpha mm. beta is m. M should be greater than zero. Great. This this we have already solved. It's minus infinity to one union nine to infinity. Yeah, uh, yes, sir. Correct. Yes, sir. M should be less than three. Okay. M should be greater than zero also. Correct. And yeah. m should belong to minus infinity to one uh, union nine to infinity also. Okay. So can I say overall, if you uh, collect all these scenarios into one, it says M should lie between zero and one. Uh, so, correct. Oh. Less than three is also satisfied. Greater than zero is also satisfied. And this condition is also satisfied. Mm. You can make a number line to find the overlap. See, if you make a number line, uh, one is here, three is here, zero is here, nine is here. So first thing says less than three. So this zone, this says greater than zero. This zone, this says minus infinity to one. Minus infinity to one is this zone. Nine to infinity is this zone. Hmm. I, I've made a very grave mistake. This is. <laughs> this is, this is one. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Even in class, say that I always do that mistake. Less than three is this zone. Yeah. Less than zero is uh, this zone. Less than one and greater than nine are these zones. So basically, this is the overlapping part. So between zero and one, this is your answer. Oh. Okay. Next question is at least one root is positive. At least one root is positive. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sir, is this uh, all the real things minus the region in which both are negative? Awesome, awesome. So, what is the answer? Uh, that one. Uh, minus infinity to 1, union 9 to infinity, minus uh, 0 to 1. So, what is the answer? Tell me. Oh, uh, once again, sir. Write it down. Simplify it further. Yes, sir. Minus infinity to 1. 9 to infinity minus what is that? 0 to 1. Minus infinity to copy. 9 to infinity. Uh, minus infinity to zero union uh, is a separate canal no? to remove that yeah, minus infinity to zero union nine to infinity minus infinity to zero union nine to infinity brilliant brilliant absolutely correct minus infinity to zero union nine to infinity awesome Chalo, next one thank you sir. Ninth, one if they, ask, hmm? if they ask one is positive, we don't take the sign of zero, right? Sorry, like at least one root is positive. Huh? Uh, like the thing will make be zero at nine, right? If you consider open interval, see, one root is positive means m should not lie between zero to one, correct? Hmm. And at the same time, M should lie between minus infinity to one union, union nine to infinity because your root can be equal also. 
yes sir correct so yeah. let me just write it down uh, one nine so there zero. okay so excluding zero can stay back mm -hmm. zero to one has to be removed yeah so this will be removed here zero to one will be removed. so zero can stay back okay so your answer will be minus infinity to zero zero included and nine to infinity nine included that's what you told right yes sir uh, the thing is if i substitute nine right it yeah. becomes zero what becomes zero the uh, the entire quadratic equation it will become 90 minus 90 zero so then how can we no, you're substituting, oh after that you're substituting m value right yeah yeah not x value yes i got it got it. so cut it nine one root is smaller than two and the other root is greater than two. Ah, one root is smaller than two. One root is smaller than two. And other root is greater than two. Just one moment, I'll be back from the washroom. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm back. Yes, sir. Any idea Thank how you. to attack this? So, 2 happens to be in between your roots, correct? Yeah. If you make a graph, things will be more evident there. Uh, let's say this is your y axis, x axis. So, it's somewhat like this. Obviously, it's an upward opening parabola, right? Because coefficient of x square is 1. Okay. So, 2 is somewhere between this. Hmm. Okay. See, a couple of things that come out from here. First of all, your root must be real hmm. and distinct. Yes, sir. Second thing is that your f of 2 must be negative. Because if you find the value of the function at 2, it's coming to negative. f of 2 is negative. This is clearly a negative quantity. Correct? 
Hmm. Let's solve them and take their intersection. Yes, sir. Zero, we have already done. M should belong to minus infinity to one union nine to infinity. Okay. F two will be what? F two would be ah uh, four four minus m minus three into two plus m. This should be negative. Hmm. So if you resolve it, ten oh. minus m should be less than zero. That yes, means sir. m should be greater than ten. Hmm. Correct. So. the union or sorry the intersection of these two intersection not union intersection what does it yes. give you um this will draw the number line and see sir 9 to 10 hmm yeah no sorry 10 to infinity hmm yeah getting the point Yes, sir. D greater than zero. Good. Yes, sir. Okay. Next condition. But just a second. Just a second, sir. Yes, sir. Done. Next is both roots are greater than two. Hmm. Same graph will just shift a bit towards the right. So does that mean f of two does not exist? No, it doesn't mean that. It can exist. Both roots are greater. Than oh yeah, got it, got it, got it. Cut it off now. Hmm, got it. One second. F of two greater than zero minus. Infinity to one, infinity and f of two. So ten minus m greater than zero. So m less than ten. That is then uh one nine ten. So minus infinity to one. Nine to infinity and less than ten. One belongs to. Ah, sir, minus infinity to one close union nine to ten nine close. Answer is from nine to ten only, nine closed. Is it? What What was your answer? Can you repeat once again? M belongs to minus infinity to one one closed. No 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 no. Answer is just M should belong to nine to ten. That was how you got. Okay. Nine closed, ten open. Ah, uh, that I got, but that also is coming. Some wrong term is also coming. Ah, oh. yeah, correct. Hmm. 
f of 2 greater than 0 right f of 2 greater than 0 right correct yes sir so uh, 10 minus m greater than 0 okay i'll tell you now the uh, drawback in that approach see uh, of course I, i'm sure you would have done this d should be greater than equal to 0 number 1 Hmm. Number two, you you would have done f of two greater than zero. Yeah, draw it up and we'll get. Now this is necessary but not sufficient, Venkat, because even if two was here, these two conditions would have been satisfied. Oh. All right. Okay. So there's a yeah. third one which nails the uh, the entire thing. That is your this part, which is actually minus b by two a. This must also be greater than two. Oh, okay. Got it, sir. Only when these three are simultaneously satisfied, your job will be done. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Now, now, can you correct the answer? Minus b by two a. Um, minus b by two a greater than two. This will give you minus infinity to one union nine to infinity. Hmm. F of two greater than zero. I think f of two we have found out earlier, right? That was ten uh, yeah, minus ten minus m. So ten um, minus, minus m should be greater than zero. That means m should be less than ten. And minus b is like m minus three by two a is two. That should be greater than two. That means m should be greater than seven. Hmm. Correct. Now let us take the overlap of these conditions. So you have one. You have uh, seven. You have nine lined up. You have ten. Okay. Yes, so sir. Two says one to minus infinity, uh, nine to infinity. The other says less than ten. Less than ten is this zone, and the other says greater than seven. Greater than seven is again this zone. Okay. So I can see an overlap of three lines occurring over here. Yes, sir. So your answer will be M should belong to nine included. To ten, ten not included. Yes, sir. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Next condition. Eleventh question. Ah, uh, both are smaller than two. I think this should be easy. Yeah, same process and put that third condition also. Just look and put the third condition. Minus b by two a less than two. Less than two, yeah. Tell me the answer now. Oh, one second, sir. Then. Papa, right? Minus one less than zero, ten less than ten. N minus three by two. Less than two, minus three. Less than four, less than seven. Okay. One seven nine ten twenty seven twenty. So minus seven to minus one nine to infinity ten less than m and m less than seven. Sir, minus infinity to uh, seven. Minus infinity to seven. No, 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 no. Minus infinity to one. Minus Both infinity to one is correct. Yes, sir. Awesome. To one. The answer that they say minus infinity to one. Yes, sir. Next question. Twelfth question. Yes, sir. 
exactly one root lies in the interval exactly one root lies in the interval 1 comma 2 oh mm, okay i think you, you need to take two cases for this i guess no figure it out yes sir from the graph only will be evident any one of the roots hmm so yeah that is one that condition will not change condition will not change so let's say alpha lies between 1 and 2 well, the condition is not going to change okay sir so now uh, that minus infinity to 1 union 9 to infinity f of 1 greater than 0 So what if we get f of one as a constant? F of one as a constant. Okay. Zero to three. Ah, let it be. No worries. Okay. Okay. Then there'll be a point, I guess. I know. Let's see. And f of two minus b by two less than two. Minus infinity infinity minus zero to one minus infinity f one is equal to three m greater than ten. Ah, uh, sir, no, no m exists. No m exists. Okay, let's try this. First of all. If exactly one root lies between this, can I say the root must be distinct? Yes, sir. Number one condition, d must be greater than zero, which we have already solved. Okay. Hmm. Now. Correct. Yes, Next, sir. Can I say that f one will be positive, but f two would be negative? Yeah. So I can say f of one into f of two would be negative. Oh yeah. Now this condition is helpful in both the cases. Even if let's say one was here and two was here, and this we are targeting this root, f one would be negative, f two would be positive. So this condition is all encompassing. It is taking care of the fact that you are saying no. Do we have to make cases? Hmm. This helps us to avoid making of those cases. Oh yes, sir. Correct. Wow. Now tell wow. me, f of one. What is f of one? I think you figured out f of one. Three. F of one was three. Okay. Yes, sir. F of two was ten minus m. M. Correct. So ten minus m less than zero. Yeah. So m must be greater than ten. Hmm. Correct. Yes, sir. So oh. What do we get from here? Then ten to infinity answer. Answer is ten to infinity. Oh, yes, sir. I took separate cases. This is an f of one and f of two. So learning. Okay. Next question. One second, sir. Uh, lesson zero. This is important. Oh. 
full package now both the roots lie in the interval 1 comma 2 oh yes and then one second Ten less than n. Uh, sir, uh, a minus infinity to one. No. No. And nine to ten. No. Oh, wait, sir. I figured one thing out. Minus b by two a. Uh, 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 less than one, no greater than one. Minus b by two a less than two. Oh yes, sir. I forgot two conditions. M greater than five. M seven. M greater than five. And M less than seven. So five to seven. Absolutely correct. Five to seven. Yes. How did you get that? Uh, like, and then there's another two conditions also. Which ah, correct. So both both the roots lie in one and two. See, first of all, d should be greater than or equal to zero. Correct. Yes, sir. Now people think that if both the roots lie between one and two, so one and two is here. Both the roots lie between one and two. They think that f of one into f of two should be positive, right? Yeah. But this is also possible if one and two were between the roots also. Correct. Oh, oh, yeah. So we have to take the third condition that minus b by two a must also be uh, greater than one and less than yeah two. between one and two. Ah, uh, ultra sets inequality. Yes, sir. Hello? Can you hear me? 
Yeah, uh, yes, sir. Okay. So this all the conditions combined will help you solve this. So last one, let's take it. So the inequality is ulta. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, sir. And your charge magically became ninety-eight percent. Yeah, I keep charging in between. Oh. <laughs> one root is greater than uh, two, and other is smaller than one. One root is greater than two, and other is smaller than one. Oh yeah, figure it out. Yeah, one second. So what is the unique thing of this then? Uh, that is two, two, and the thing should be less than the roots. See, one root is greater than two, and the other is smaller than one. Hmm. That means one and two lie between the roots. Ah, one and two lie between the roots. There's a unique thing of this then. First of all, root should be distinct, so d should be greater than zero. Hmm. Secondly, ten greater than m. F of one, f of two must be positive. Yes, sir. Correct. But this is not sufficient. Hmm. One root is greater than one, and other is smaller than one. Smaller than one. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you do this, this condition is valid even for f one and two lying over here also, right? Uh, yes, sir. Correct. So yes, instead sir. of this, this is not sufficient. So I'll I'll remove this. Instead of that, I have to say separately that f of one is less than zero, oh, and f yeah. of two is also less than zero. Wow. F of one is three, though. F of one is three. Yes, sir. So basically, such a situation is not possible. Yeah. Okay, because this itself is a null set. Yes, sir. A null set intersection with all the set will make it a null set. Null set, yeah. <laughs> no such, no such M exists. Oh, no such interval exists. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
okay venkat we'll stop here so you have some 10 minutes uh i have another class to go so i have to go and have my lunch also oh yes sir yes sir okay uh hmm. is there any doubt that you have expired